Hey, you looking for that perfect cup of coffee? Don't want to stand in line to get it nor pay $20 a cup? I don't blame you. Folks, we are going to show you the tips and the tricks. Go in depth, answer your questions about cowboy coffee, the smoothest cup around. Hey, welcome to camp. My name is Kent Rollins and who we have got something good going today. It is a beautiful day, a great day for what? Cowboy coffee. Yep, you heard me right. Now, a lot of y'all might have found us some years back by our cowboy coffee video that we had out there because man, did it take off. But let me tell you, we are going more in depth. We're going to answer some of your questions that y'all have sent in to us and asked us in years past. I can remember back when I was a small child, people was making coffee about any way they could. Boiling it in a tin can down there by the creek, boiling it in an old coffee can at a branding pen. Why? Coffee's been around forever, and there's coffee shops all over the world. I'm talking about them old-timey ones, where you could go in there and sit down, and for 25 cents, you could get a cup of coffee and talk and visit with your neighbors. Best way to start the day. But as time went on, things have changed. Yes, they have. There is stuff like ventes, grandes, lattes. I don't know what kind of coffee that stuff is. I ain't even got a clue. But coffee is coffee. But when you make it the right way, folks, it is going to be the best cup of coffee in the world. Drinking this cowboy coffee has health benefits. I'm telling you, it does. Because I've had people come to me and say, oh, Ken, I really would like to drink your coffee, but I have acid reflux. Gives me heartburn, indigestion. This won't. If you cook it the right way, when you take the bitterness out of it, that coffee is smooth. I mean, you can drink it. You won't have no problems with your stomach. You won't have no heartburn, no indigestion. You won't even belch out loud at church no more because you have drank the right kind of coffee. Now, y'all don't forget, everything you need to know will be right down there below. But let's talk about some of these myths and stuff that people have tried to give this cowboy coffee a bad name. Don't listen to all them other folks that be telling you that this stuff is too stout, it is too dark, it is too burnt, because it ain't none of them things when you make it right. Folks, it's a little chilly out here, so let's go on over here to old Bertha and let's get us some cowboy coffee started. Well, but folks, you gotta get you a coffee pot but make sure that that coffee pot that you get gets well seasoned. And Shannon will link you a video up there to where you can watch how to season your coffee pot to get the best flavor out of it because it's just like cast iron. You got to take care of the inside of that pot. And let me tell you something. You ain't never going to wash it with soap and water. Yep, you heard me right. It's just like cast iron. But now I have made a lot of coffee at times, coffee for maybe 3,000 people. I'd have every bean pot in the world going, making coffee, boiling it in there, straining it out of there, running it back and forth. So don't be afraid of making it anything. Because like I say, them old timers and them branding pens, back when they used to make coffee in a metal can, that's what we used to make coffee. Hey, it's good as gold. We have got water to the bottom of the spout right here. And it is warm. Because you want to let the water warm before you do anything else. You can see we got the eye out of old Bertha and she is generating just the right amount of heat, which is 697,000 degrees. Let's talk about the different grinds of coffee. Now, sure, I got a coffee grinder that I used to have on the wagon, and I'd grind them beans every morning and make coffee. It's a coarse ground. Now, to me, that coffee needs to boil longer than a fine ground coffee. So remember that when you're going back and forth as to what coffee you like to this use. This is a medium roast here, so that's what we're gonna use, but you can use anything you want. Now, for this big pot, it's about three handfuls, which makes about what? A cup and three-fourths to two cups. So we're going to go with that right there. The water was warm. We put it in there. Now we got to just sit and wait patiently for it to boil. And I'm talking, it ain't going to go bubble, bubble, perk, perk. It's going to boil. Because when you let that coffee boil, like I said, you're taking away that bitterness, that acid, and everything's going to be good in the world. Now y'all might not be having one of these great big pots in your kitchen, but we have took care of you because it is a fourth of a cup of grounds to one quart of water, and that way you can make it at home for just you or you and one or two more. We are gonna wait on old Bertha to get this. That was Bertha. <laughs> you. Well, while we're waiting on old Bertha to do her job here, we are gonna answer some of them questions that me and Shan's been getting for quite a while. And a lot of people say, where do you get them big pots? Now folks, that's one of them finder fees deals. I'm gonna charge you for telling you what I'm telling you where you can get them, okay? Now, every once in a while, antique stores, junk shops, sometimes eBay, you can find them on there. But be careful, 
if you go to an antique shop and you find one of them old coffee pots like that, grab it up, take it outside, tell them you ain't going to steal it, pull it up there and look to the sun. Make sure you ain't got no pinholes in there because you got to be real careful. A lot of these things have sit and got a little rust in them and then they get them pinholes. So when you got them holes in the bottom, if they're just little tiny pinholes, you might think about trying to get them with some solder and fix them. But folks, usually when you're sitting on a hot surface like this, them ain't going to last. I'm just going to tell you right now, a watch pot never boils. Remember that saying? But I guarantee you can walk off and get busy. Bertha will boil it over if she gets a chance. So I'm like a pointer bird dog, old Frank. I'm going to keep an eye on it. That first boiling starting there. Uh-huh. Bertha is trying her hardest to bring it to a good boil. There's a lot of things going on in here, and it ain't going to be long, folks, till things is going to really come up here to the top. Now, that's when you got to be careful, especially if you're in the house, because that may want to boil over. So when you get to that point to where you can see it just fixing to boil, turn that fire down a little bit in the house so it don't boil over, because you done re re reduced that water level a little in that pot. So we're going to let it keep on continuing here till it will sneak up there and really roll. I'm talking churning. That's what makes good coffee. It is what we call rolling over, rolling over. Now we're going to let it sit there and roll over as long as it ain't up here trying to boil over. We can leave it right there. If it was trying to boil over a little, I'd scoot it off that hot spot right there and just let it slow down a little. Now, we ain't going to burn this coffee. We ain't going to scorch it, but I like to let her go about four minutes just to roll and boil right there. Get everything broke down good to where the, everything is smooth as silk. Or you remember me telling you about the Safeway chicken. What is smoother than a Safeway chicken? Well, Safeway was a grocery store down there in some parts of the country, and I had never seen a chicken be plucked so smooth and shiny. I think they waxed them every day because them chickens shine like a silver dollar in a goat's butt. That is smoother than a Safeway chicken. Well, been about four minutes she has, so let me cover this hot spot up. And let's set her right back over here on the warming side of old Bertha to where it can just sit there and mind its own business. Now, I like to let it cool off there just a minute and then we'll do the rest to it. But the longer you boil that coffee, the stouter it will become at some point. Make sure you get it to your desired strength when you like to drink coffee. You'll know by the amount of time it boils how much coffee you want to put in the pot if you like it a little stouter than that. But these methods have never failed me and they have served thousands of cowboys early in the morning, middle of the day, and late at night. Well, it is set about two minutes it has and we're going to take about a cup full of cold water. I'm going to pour some down the spout a little around the edges here, so bear with me. See them little tiny holes right there where them comes to that spout? Now any of them grounds that get caught up in there, that's why you pour that back down through the spout and look who has joined us for cowboy coffee. It is the bee. So you want to make sure you pour a little down the spout and then a little around the edges. Now the little smaller coffee pots, a lot of times them grounds will get caught up on the sides and hung up in here. So I just can take me one of these little, what you call, paper towels, wet it in a little water, and you can just make a little circle around there, and a lot of times them grounds will stick right to it, and you're a done deal. Looky there, it's like magic. You might be saying, well, how come did you weaken your coffee? Well, we didn't weaken it, folks. We have to put the cold water in there to settle the grounds. The cold forces them to the bottom. 
That's when them people used to say, you just crack an egg and put it in there, all the grounds will go to the bottom. I don't like my eggs in my coffee. People say, well, you used to just put a horseshoe in there and make it go. No, no. Traditional cowboy coffee has always just been put a little cold water in the spout, all the grounds settle to the bottom, smoothest coffee in the world, I guarantee you. That reminds you of something, folks, like one of them spitting, spewing, coffee dripping makers in the house where it just gives you here, there, and yonder every once in a while, and the water temperature ain't hot enough to take a bath in. Now, when people don't put enough cold water in this coffee to settle the grounds, you would see grounds floating all around the top of there. And you can see it is sort of built up through the years. Really don't take but about two weeks sitting on old Bertha or a campfire to get that soot. If you want to keep yours clean, take you just a rag, any kind of cheap vegetable oil, rub it around the bottom and the everywhere, just give it a little light coating. That thing will clean off so easy when you get through with it, especially if you're cooking with a really sooty wood over an open fire. That's an aerobic working pot. You get you a bunch of them together and lift them up here like this all day, you'll be working out. Now that is a lot of coffee and it will fuel cowboys up on any kind of morning. And most of the time they'd be 12 to 15 in camp. Always make two pots. This one will always get through, but I'll always have another one just in case of backup because you don't never want to run out of coffee. So let's talk about do you make a bunch of this at the house and you don't know what you're going to do with it. Well, sometimes I'll just pour it in a mason jar, anything in the world, and you can just set it in an icebox. Tip that pot up there and go to pouring. Now when you get down there pretty close to the bottom of the pot, especially if it's one of them littler pots, you might ought to do it from the first. Just get you one of them strainers or lay you a coffee filter up there in it or whatever and just pour it through there. That way you won't have no chance any grounds getting in that coffee when you reheat it the next day. You can microwave that coffee the next morning if you need to or just pour it back in a sauce pot and heat it up. If you're wanting to store it for an extended period of time in an icebox, just make sure that you got a good seal on that lid and that coffee will last you a good four or five days in there. So you can make it first of the week, just warm it up after that. Now, I poured this coffee and I want y'all to see as it goes out and tell me, did you see any grounds come floating out there? I ain't seen none. And we ain't even got to the bottom of the cup. So it is good to go. Folks, I want to tell you what this coffee has done for me. This coffee has made me thousands upon thousands of friends and people that I call family, just like y'all that watch our videos. Coffee is something that we always have on at the wagon. The very first thing that's on every morning and it's the last thing that's pulled off there every night. Because I never know when somebody's gonna come in a no camp like this and say, hey Cookie, you got a cup of coffee? And there's nothing finer to me than see people just sit down over morning, get a cup of coffee when they come into camp. And it's time to visit, time to reflect on maybe what's going to happen during the day. But it all starts with that good cup of coffee. But on them old cold days, I can remember when I'd have to chop ice in a water barrel to make coffee because it's froze solid. Them cowboys get in, huddle around old Bertha, get a cup of coffee in their hands, and you could see them just trembling like that. Old Bertha and that good coffee, it'd thaw them out. It done its job. It's getting a little breezy and cloudy here in camp, so I'm gonna go back over here by Bertha and warm up here in a minute. But we thank you so much for stopping by. Me and Shannon the Beagle never take it for granted that you watch our videos. And we thank our veterans and all our servicemen and women for keeping that old flag flying high above that wagon and the freedom we have in this great country that we can do what we love to do. Like, share, and subscribe. And if you got a neighbor and he ain't subscribed, go over, ring his doorbell, dingy dong, and say, hey, do you watch that Cowboy Kent Rollins guy on YouTube? You should, I promise you, and, he'll and help you out. And bring him some coffee. And bring him some coffee, that's right. God bless you each and every one, and we'll see you by the fire and drinking some Cowboy coffee. Sometime Bertha and the coffee pot gotta have a little pep talk. You can do it, you can do it. Well, it's a little breezy here in camp, and I think I'm going to go back and huddle up around old Bertha, but we hope you learned something today. There's also there, well, that was really good. I was going somewhere. Thank you so much for stopping by. Me and Shannon the Beagle never take it for granted that you watch our videos, and there'll be a little link on, what was we linking to? The, um, 